VTubers. Content creators that have motion captured characters they play in a digital space. I've wanted to have or make a model for myself for quite a while now. The first VTuber I ever saw was not Iron Mouse or Anthony Padilla. It was actually the animator Neurogeist. He did art live streams a lot back in the day, and I just popped in on one and saw his usual drawing character was different. It was moving. Moving strangely. Then it just clicked in my brain and I was blown away. I remember in all caps typing in the chat like, Is this connected to you? Does this track your real face? So incredibly cool. Since then, VTubing has become a lot more mainstream and more importantly, more accessible. I was able to make my entire model without paying any additional money. Well, basically. I already owned a CSP and did end up buying some custom brushes for the art. Uh, but you could easily make the art in Krita or any other free software that can export PSD files. Okay, so what did I do to get started? I made a PNG tuber. Here he is! Look at my handsome man! He can also be angry. I just whipped it together trying to get the basic idea down and then decided to go from this immediately to a fully rendered and rigged VTuber model. I will now demonstrate how we got from this to this. The most important thing for me was obviously the design. Most of the reason I wanted to make my own VTuber is because I'm not an anime person. Many people are and that's fantastic for them, but I've never felt that way and I didn't want to look like an anime person. And there aren't a lot of options for getting a free or even not free model that isn't anime themed or at least a cat or something. My idea for my VTuber came to me in the middle of the night when I was randomly sketching persona ideas trying to tire myself out. I was thinking maybe something with wings or birds of some kind and then I remembered some TV head art I'd made about a year ago when I was abroad. You can see me having the idea and start speed sketching the basic principle right here. I've never seen a TV head VTube model before. I'm sure there's a million of them, but I very specifically didn't Google it because I don't want to compare mine to anyone else's or accidentally steal anything. And if there aren't a million, then I call being the first and the coolest. I did a bunch of sketches until I found one I liked and then went on to design more of the outfit or the costume. I tried to really push myself to make a lot of iterations. I have this bad creative habit of getting way too attached to the first thing I draw or the first idea I have and then I can't let it go even in favor of a better or more effective idea. Making this character was one of the most fun times I've ever had creatively. I loved every second of it. I didn't have to make a mood board, which I often do for my new characters, mostly because it's fun. But because I was simply working in whatever my preferred style was, it was so much easier to do. I like my little goblin core aesthetic. Actually, I watched Lavender Town's videos about styles as characters, and I was watching it and I still feel like, why would anyone not want to live in a completely goblin core world? It's the superior aesthetic, clearly. S tier. Anyway, I made the five outfits and then decided to squish them all together into one final design. And here it is. So then came actually making the model. This ended up being far more difficult for me than I actually expected. I knew it would be a lot of work to render out a big illustration like this, but also, I haven't drawn in a non-textured, sketchy style in like a year, and had to do multiple passes of sketching and refining and line work until it was at a decent quality. I decided to do only about the knees up, though the full design does have these cute violet shoes, so that's a little sad, but whatever. And one of the tricks I tried to implement very early on was to predict and understand what kinds of parts I would need to separate to make the model work smoothly. There's a lot of tutorials about how to do it for a human face, but because I was using a computer screen, a lot of the step-by-step -step VTuber tutorials didn't really work for me and I had to think outside the box on what I wanted to really move and make happen. You can see me doing a lot of planning and different layers beforehand. It was an interesting challenge and I did enjoy the extra brain power required, but it meant I drew incredibly slowly and had a million billion layers. For reference, I usually sketch something, clean up the sketch, and then turn it into the line art, and then combine everything and use one, maybe two layers to draw on. It feels more authentic and it's less stressful for me that way. Uh, but this is not how this one was working out, oh no. I would plan ahead of time with loads of folders and subfolders trying to make sure everything had a place. In some ways, it's hard to really categorize because parts of the cardigan or sweater will need to be behind the shirt and some of them in front, so they can't all be in the same folder despite me wishing they could be. In the actual rigging software, this is solved very elegantly with sections of folders that show the layer order on what goes on top and what's beneath it. 
and then a different area where you can group together and combine layers into big categories like shirt or cardigan. It was very handy and very well thought out in my opinion. Speaking of this sweater, this thing gave me so much grief because I knew I wanted it done in a certain way and I wanted it to look vaguely realistic, but I also wanted to use a brush because it would literally take so much longer to do it by hand. TLDR, Clip Studio Paint's clippy tokens are terrible and they need to rethink their system a bit. But I did get this brush. It's exactly what I wanted and I'm happy to link it below if any of you are interested in buying it as well. I didn't even record probably the hour and a half I spent testing brushes and different things and testing all the kinds of brushes in this pack, trying to find the one that suited my needs the best. Anyways, I did figure something out and I'm super happy with how it looks in the end. All right, so our model is drawn and hopefully finished. Let's get into the rigging. So I used live 2D Cubism with a 43 day free trial, which is an incredible thing of them to offer, honestly. It's a really good program with a couple of flaws, but honestly, it's very well made for this exact purpose. Surprising, I know. I mainly just watched a million tutorials and fumbled my way through by looking at one of the example models and trying to figure it out. I can link the main ones I used to start with below if you'd like to check them out. And you can also look up basically any mini tutorial for a specific question you might have about the software or about the rigging process, just on YouTube or on Reddit or online somewhere. Okay, so I just wanted to really quick show you. So last night I was working for like three hours trying to solve this problem. So you see these, you see these little, these itsy tiny bitsy things. I have been trying to fix that to like get rid of them and re-import the model so many times because they're attached to these line arts oh my gosh and it's not even on the texture i list. okay i'll still put it on the, i'll need to fix that but i can probably figure that out <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyways this is the issue here so i have been trying to get rid of those i've made like six versions i've spent like three hours i was working till like one in the morning <laughs> last night trying to fix it anyway so i have made a new photoshop file or a new, yeah, and Photoshop, and many Photoshop files, but a new Clip Studio Paint file, and a new Photoshop file, of just these layers, because the whole file would not, just would not, like, go and, like, overlay at all. It would just make it, oh my gosh, see? See this? Also this. I need to fix that, too. Uh, okay. You know what? Anyways, I am struggling, and I just wanted to report back to you, and, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's what I've been doing. Also, my Minecraft launcher changed. I don't really know why, but it was kind of weird. I just woke up and I was like, that's not what it was yesterday. <laughs> that's not what it was six hours ago when I was last awake. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, hope your day is good. Bye. There were a few issues that I couldn't find any answers for, but I eventually figured out everything that was vital to finish the model anyway. If you'd like me to address some of the more technical errors I ran into while making it, or if you are curious about more detailed rigging information, please write a comment below the video and let me know. I'd be happy to make a more tutorial kind of video about it and the problems I faced. I recorded a few bits and pieces of my voice along the way, so here is the first time I exported my model and really tested to see if it was working. Okay. It's, uh... <laughs> It's not as like expressive as I would like, so I'll have to change some stuff. But the head tilting kind of works. It's hard. I have to like turn my head all the way to the side to get to get the other side to show here. Okay, so it still needs like a whole bunch of work, but it is working. I, I spent a lot of trouble just getting it to export, but it looks like this head turn looks pretty good. It's just the other side that's not what I want it to be yet. The eyes are tracking pretty well. I think it looks cute! Yeah, there's still that little tiny nothing bit, which is annoying, but <laughs> oh well, you know. Okay. I can get behind this. Look at, oh my gosh, it's working! It's working! It's doing the thing that I wanted it to. I mean, barely. But I, I did this whole thing. I made this whole thing work, you know? Anyways. Once I knew the model could be exported, I really just got down to work. I spent about three days obsessively working on my model, waking up early and going to bed late. It was kind of awesome, to be honest. Here are some of the goals for the model that I wanted to accomplish by the end. Number one, I wanted to make a character or a model that suited my aesthetic and looked different from others. Number two, I wanted to have physics attached to the back of the cardigan, the wire, and the flowers. 
Number three, I wanted the eyes to blink like a computer screen and not have them like deformed to fit. Number four, I wanted to have the head bob up and down passively. And number five, I wanted to have changeable screens that also worked with the rigging so that I could play to the strengths of the TV head. And I managed all of them. The physics was something I completely didn't understand at first, but a million tutorials later, I finally figured it out enough to get by at least. With that, let's move on to the grand reveal. So here is my final model. I went through about seven exported versions of it to test in VTube Studio, which is what I'm using to do the face capturing. And the recorded footage I have is over 20 hours. I did spend many more hours, mostly at night, just arguing with the software, trying to figure out why it wouldn't export properly. Uh, thus, it did take a lot longer than 20 hours in total, but 20 hours is how much for footage I've recorded. So here I'll showcase a little bit of my character around. Um, it's your face tracks. That's what it does. If I turn my head, you can see the sides of the computer, I think. It's hard for me to see it. And there's like physics on the all the little bits on the wire and on the like the flowers and stuff and the shirt and the cardigan and the overalls. They're pretty subtle though, so it's a little hard to tell. And then here is the cool part. I have all these screens. So this is my main screen, this green one. Um, here, this is what it is with it off. <laughs> yeah, the green screen is the main one. And I also have, I have an angry one for, um, I have a sad one that also smiles and it looks so really, really sad. Um, then there's this really cute and happy one that's extra bright. Wah! And when I blink, it does like cute blinks. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then of course, uh, because I couldn't help myself, I did a really creepy one. It's my favorite. Something's with the mouth. I can't get it to be normal, but it, it adds to the creepiness, I think. So yeah, uh, we'll go back to the regular one. And then in addition, one thing that caused me an unexpected like six hours of work, <laughs> I did a funny little meme meme emotes that I thought would be super cute and no, I haven't seen anyone else do. And I thought, man, the world just needs these. Um, so I have Eep. <laughs> Here's Eep. Um, and then I have Squish, <laughs> which is squishy. And then I have big brain, which is all one word. And you can see the face still like tracks and stuff. I can still have the different faces and I have big brain. Anyways, the issue with th making those is I didn't pay attention to my parameters very well. And I accidentally permanently deformed the model and hadn't saved very many versions of it otherwise. So I had a lot of problems um, undoing all of my, my eeps and, <laughs> and my big brain. <laughs> But I got there. Uh, luckily, I had one of the sides of the breathing was normal, so I was able to use those parameters. For a while, I was just like manually trying to line up all of the meshes to be what they were before, and it was not working. It was not going well. It was very bad. But I did get there, so that's good. I have, I love all my little janky, <laughs> my little janky guys. I just felt they were really, really important. So. That's what you get. They're they're all very bad, but they just felt vital. So this is this was the short and long of it, or mostly just the short. If you have any questions about this VTube character, what her story is, or would like a more tutorial kind of video about how I made it, um, please write a comment below, and I would be happy to make a second video doing like a Q and A or some little lore or a tutorial or just answering questions in general. As for what this VTuber means for my channel specifically, not that much. Honestly, I probably won't stream with it, though I won't like specifically rule it out, but streaming makes me really stressed and I've decided it's just not really for me. Having the model will be easier for me to like collab with other YouTubers who, if they have a face cam or if some kind of video would be improved by having some kind of moving model. I want to do a lot of different kinds of art and try different art things. I also just really enjoyed making it. In fact, if any of you would be interested in possibly commissioning me to make a model, I would definitely consider it. 
We could be a scourge of TV or radio or whatever household appliance heads you desire taking over the virtual space. <laughs> that would actually be so funny though. I mean, can you imagine just like a blender and a KitchenAid and an old telephone playing Minecraft together? That'd be... <laughs> we need to make this a reality, please, please. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had an absolute blast making it. Um, it was both far, far harder than I thought and also easier than expected to make a VTube model. I hope you have a really great day or night or whatever in between and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> okay, bye.